So we're out here in Bradenton, Florida at the GTR World Cup, and there's a car here I was not expecting to see. Our friend Arnie, who recently broke the cannonball record by almost an hour and a half, has his Mercedes-Benz here. I'm going to see if I can track him down and get the full tour. Mr. Arnie, how's it going? Good to see you. Congratulations. Finally get to shake your hand in person. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we saw each other for a you know a brief amount of time in somewhere in Nebraska, I think. Yep, <laughs> as you were flying by at like 100 and something miles an hour. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> yes, allegedly. I, I got to hear the story about this car and what how you prepared it for the Cannonball Run. I'm going to hop in here so we can get away from all these loud GTRs and uh, find a quiet spot and you can give me the rundown on it. All right, let's do it. Wait. So you were basically planted in one of these seats for 27 hours, 25 minutes? Yeah. What was the longest break you had during that time? Well, I mean, it was it was me and Doug were the only drivers. Okay. So it, there was four fuel stops and we would go, depending on the distance between fuel stops, we'd be going five to six hours or so. So I would get a break, but you know, you're so amped up that you really you really can't sleep or anything. So I just I would spend the time on another set of binoculars. You know, we had one guy that was full time on binoculars. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, when I wasn't driving, we just had you know I was on the binoculars and so was he. <laughs> Give me a tour of the electronics we got going on here. There's a lot. Yeah, there's, I'm looking at. You know, there's a lot going on, but actually, there's usually more. Yeah. Um, because we're usually running two phones over here on the left. One, what are those for? One's running a GPS with a speedometer, so it's it's capturing uh, trip data along with the Garmin GPS, and then usually the person driving, their phone is here running Waze. Uh, this is our plane crash avoidance system. It sounds really high tech, but when you look at it, it's, it's really pretty basic. All it does is it tells you if there's a plane overhead. This is something that uh, guys would use with uh, small aircraft. This is the screen for the thermal camera, okay. which uh, at night we have mounted. I remember seeing that uh, in photos because it was just blindingly bright. Yes, <laughs> in certain yes, times. it was. Uh, we've got another phone here running. It's a, it's kind of like an underground experimental app that uh, scrapes data from Waze and it creates a heat map of uh, speed traps in the past like 30 days. So oh, you, really? So you, so you have an idea of you know where they may be patrolling you know it, you know at the moment. We didn't have super good luck. It was a little glitchy, um, but uh, you know it's just another screen. And, and what we say in the cannibal world is the more screens you have, the more legit you are. <laughs> All right, continuing the tour on. So uh, here is the fuel cell fuel gauge. That is for the 45 gallon cell that's okay. mounted in the trunk. You hit that switch once, it'll it'll pump for two minutes, mm -hmm. and it's about four and a quarter gallons. So I can I can hit that about 10 times or so uh, on a run. So then we got just a standard Cobra CB, a unit in police scanner, okay. Garmin GPS which we use uh, to record data, and that's where you see that the screen with all the... Oh, all the, the main the, stats? Yeah, yeah, all the main stats and stuff. My gyro-stabilized binoculars right here. We, uh, wow. we have two sets of those that we run, but yeah, we found them to be really well, work really well. So what was the most helpful piece of equipment outside of the binoculars? Um, I mean, radar detector, you can't do it without that. I've got, I'm running two, I'm running a net radar, which is a, a built-in system, which attaches to the uh, laser jammer system, which is a AL priority. And then I've got my Passport Max 360. Um, so really, the radar detector, then laser jammer, and- So if, those two pieces are really, like work really well. Yeah, like I, I won't drive any, I won't go anywhere without both of those. The, the thermal camera didn't really have any saves and it's very complex and, and difficult to use and it's taken a lot of time to kind of perfect it mm -hmm. and get it figured out. It is still, it's still clunky and cumbersome, but I guess it gives you the, um, gives you that confidence at night because when you're driving down, it's like when we're in Utah, I mean, it's just wide open, huge open spaces and it's dark there shouldn't be but anything there, hot. I mean, it shouldn't be anything there. Yeah. You know, but you're always, if you don't have this, you're in the back of your head, you're like, oh crap, you're just, right. there's that one cop that's been waiting his whole life for you. Yep. You know? So in the back seat, uh, what I found is like in Cannonball, you really want to be organized because 
on all my other runs, like the, the, the end back of the car just is a total disaster by the time you're done. You got bins of stuff flying around. So what I did is I cut the seat in half, the bottom seat in half. And we built like a shelving system. So we have got our we've got our cooler, we've got some other supplies, like <laughs> fuses, um, wire ties, you know, anything that we might need in the car should something come loose or whatever, because we can't pull over and get something out of the trunk. So you mm -hmm. want to have everything you want, snacks and that kind of stuff. Oh, you've got the camera itself. Oh, yeah, we got the, the rail Holy down. cow. So it's like it uses a typical like gun rail. Yeah. Kind of mount on there. <laughs> <laughs> and this wasn't like some like easy bolt-on thing. We had to, this is a uh, a gimbal from a DSLR camera, and it's not the best. But there's really there's like a huge disparity. It's like this thing's a couple hundred bucks, and the next best thing is like thousands. We actually 3D printed some mounts for some springs because we're having some problems with like wind buffeting. Yeah. So my buddy Drew over at our machine shop, MDI, we designed these little spring perches and springs to kind of like preload it. To, to keep it stable. All right, so tell me about the car itself. What are we looking at here? So this is a 2015 Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG, and uh, I've outfitted with the Alpha 9 package, which is GT28 turbos, intercoolers, intake, tune, uh, and downpipes, which usually make about 750 to the wheels. I've got it turned down to about 700, just for the different gases and stuff you get across the country. And, and you know, I'm not trying to beat anybody on a drag strip or anything. So 700 wheel horsepower is uh, plenty for the car and for what I need it to do. All about reliability. Exactly. Of course, it's AMS stuff because of your history. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the co-founder of AMS. So you know, I just I'm not with them anymore, but I just thought it'd be fitting to to kind of represent the brand that uh, you know I helped create. My buddy Fred from Ben's house uh, put the whole system in, put it together, and uh, it's it's really it's it's run great. I've got 25,000 miles on this setup, and it, it's all been rallies, uh, cannonball. I mean, it's all been uh, you know pretty abusive stuff, and the car has just been flawless. The big thing on cannonball is you you don't want to take a red Ferrari because <laughs> you know you won't get out of New Jersey before there's a roadblock. So you really need a car that's like indescript, and that's why I chose an E63 because I knew that if I made some tweaks to the exterior, it would just kind of be just like any other silver passenger car out there. So this car is actually a very highly optioned uh, AMG. It's got red calipers, which I painted gray. Uh, totally debadged the car. It's got a full carbon package. I covered everything in silver vinyl. And really what I think really makes this car just kind of totally blend in is what I did to the back of the car. So sort of unintentionally, I created what looks from the back to be like a 2006 Accord. It totally does. <laughs> so just by, you know, I, I, this is totally by accident too, I'll just be honest with you. I just kind of saw the body line here. I said, you know, let's throw some silver vinyl there. Let's cover up the, the inner stuff on the, on the trunk. And voila, nobody knows what it is. Well, in the trunk, we got the- Oh yes. Cell. I was very curious about this because I was wondering how the, the fueling worked. So, so you got spare spare wheel and tire. So we got yeah full size spare wheel and tire, and then what we did for the fuel cell is we've got two inlets. Okay. So when you pull up to the gas pump, you pull really tight to the gas pump. You take the opposite side of the pump, and you put it in the in the factory's tank. You take your side and put it on the far side here, so you're doing like dual fill up. Yeah. When the factory tank's done, you, you <laughs> throw the other one in there. So you know we're we're able to do fuel stops. You know, pumping in 60 gallons of gas and, and you know we were only stopped for like four minutes or so. Wow, that's impressive. You know, for each stop. And then another thing we did was should we ever get pulled over and there's questions like like what is this? We've actually got real Merce German Mercedes stickers that we just kind of threw on there like a like a, a weight <laughs> and air chart. Um, so, so who knows what that says in German. And how long did it take to plan all this out? Um, you know, the, the, the build itself, probably about three months or so, I guess, if you strung it all together. No, it wasn't terrible. But the practice runs have been yeah, half your life. Yeah, so, so yeah, exactly. So this, this was my sixth run. And, um, you know, I think it really came, boiled down to a lot of experience, you know, um, some skill and a lot of luck. For sure. And what was the previous record by Ed? Uh, uh, Ed had the record at 28 hours and 50 minutes. Um, 
that was touted to be unbeatable and honestly when he when he did that like it kind of like crushed my dreams of ever doing it you know he was very forthcoming with information and very helpful and uh, he's made really quite kind of like uh, the community of cannonballers he's kind of like brought us all together where before it was kind of like kind of scattered and stuff so yeah I can't thank him enough what, what's your biggest piece of advice if someone's considering this? Well, <laughs> You know, it, it's safety yeah. is, is absolutely number one because the Cannonball's almost got 50 years of history and there have no, been no major accidents or in, in no injuries at all on any Cannonball. I think the only, the only accidents ever happened was uh, three women in a, in a limousine in like 1975. Uh, one fell asleep or something and, you know, like went off the road or... I, it was it was really in non event even. Yeah. But yeah, it's got it's got an impeccable safety wow. track record. So you've kind of got like fifty years of history like riding on your shoulders. So safety is is paramount. It's like running a marathon, it's pacing yourself, right? Oh it's absolutely pacing yourself yeah. because you can't drive recklessly because someone's gonna call the cops and you know, if you're driving crazy enough, they're just gonna put up a roadblock. You know, they're gonna they're gonna know where you are. It's not like you can just turn off on some road and and, and all that. So yeah, you really have to just run as fast as you can without affecting anybody, and that—that's my whole motto. Is like I don't want any—I don't want to scare anybody. I don't want to make anybody break, turn, or do anything. I don't want to affect anybody in any way. I just want to go about my business and uh, and, and not wreck their day. And it worked. And it worked. And thank you. If it wasn't for Kyle Loftus, man, I would have been a lot slower through Nebraska. <laughs> well, it was—it was a pleasure to be a part of it. It was very exhilarating to just be a very small part of this, the journey. It was, it was awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks, Arnie. Congrats again. Thank you.